Greetings viewers and welcome to my channel. Today's video I'm doing a quick review and also a load stress test on this 300 watt pure sine wave inverter from Bestec. I picked this up off of Amazon on a lightning deal and it was about $42 US shipped to my door and pretty impressed with that price point actually. I think they've gone for a little bit less but uh just the considering that most inverters of this power level, say 300 watts or less, typically are what are called modified sine waves or step square wave outputs here on the AC outlets. And that's usually good for most devices, but there are some devices that don't play well with that type of waveform that can cause problems, they can get uh, overheated, all kinds of different compatibility issues. This as a true sine wave, which is the same as what you get out of your utility or from your wall socket in your house. You guys have seen this jump pack on my channel before. This is the Schumacher SJ1332. Real quick, this does have some 12 volt power outlets, but it also has a power inverter. But the inverter inside actually has a modified sine wave output or a step square wave. And that is not compatible with a lot of different devices. If anything, it could actually cause them to overheat or possibly get damaged. A quick note on features. So we got your typical on and off switch. We have your AC outlets here, the NEMA 15 amps here. And then we have your red and green power indicator of green for power and then red for a fault or an overload. You have two USB ports, each are 2.4 amps each. And then it's got some venting here. These are actually vents here. You can get this in a couple different colors. I elected for the black and the red. And then on the back here, you have your cooling fan here. And then you have the power 12 volt socket adapter. And that is probably the one of the only detractors I don't like about this inverter, but it's not a big deal. Most cars have their DC power sockets fused that either 15 amps or 20 amps, and that will only give you up to 150 to 180 watts of power on the AC side. Any you try to draw anything beyond that, and this is supposed to handle 300 watts continuous, your DC outlet is not going to be able to handle that. And the limitation that you have with that inverter is that if you can't connect, you, you would have to buy an, another adapter in order to connect this inverter directly to a battery, which is what I've purchased here. It basically takes, and this came in a kit, uh, you can actually connect the 12 volt power socket, and then it's got a couple different connectors, but then you can connect it to the alligator clips directly to the battery, and then you'll be able to go and draw up to the full 300 watts of continuous power. The only other lack of feature that I don't like about this inverter, and it's not really a big deal because this is built to a price point, is the safety fuses. You cannot easily replace the safety fuses inside this inverter. Uh, they are actually inside, uh, mounted on the PCB, directly soldered to it. You need special tools to remove them, and why bother at this price point? At $42, if the if the fuses pop you're just going to go out and buy another one anyway plus you couldn't pull 50 amps from a power adapter like this uh, if this came with say post on each side and you can add your own adapter whether it be the alligator clips or this then i can understand that being the case where you can draw up to that amount that i believe that this this is fused at 50 amps for example you probably get up to a 500 watt surge for like say half a second and that would be the extent of it before the inverter overloads, shuts down, or pops those safety fuses. So can't really knock it, but not something I like to see. Now, I found a lot of reviews on Amazon for this inverter, and some have even gone a step further and actually measured the output of this inverter on an oscilloscope. You can see a few of the pictures that I was able to find, and kudos to the person who actually took the time to do this. But what does that exactly mean? So with any sine wave inverters, you have uh, the DC to AC conversion, and then the part that is often missing in a lot of these inexpensive inverters is the filtering. And that one of the reviews goes on to mention that, yes, while you get a really nice clean sine wave, the circuitry inside that is making that happen, there's a lack of filtering on the output stage to 
get that sine wave to be as clean as possible. Now, for most devices, it really isn't going to matter. But in the case if you were to use it for, say, an audio application, well, that's where you're going to hear that limitation, and I'll show you why. Here's my practice bass amp. It's a little PV micro bass, a little 8-inch speaker, and I, this is actually the first bass amp that I've ever had. I've had it for many, many years, and it's a good analog to listen to how filtered a particular power inverter is. I'm going to play it on utility power, and you're going to hear the white noise when I turn up the gain, but I want you to pay special attention when I have the inverter connected to see what background noise or the switching frequency noise that is not filtered on that power inverter that's where you're going to have issues if you're using an audio application so on utility power typical white noise when you have the gain all the way up now let's listen to it on the power inverter now here's a simple setup we have a 12 volt power source running the inverter and the inverter is plugged in to the micro bass amp here and you can see that it's running but here is the issue that often comes up with these cheap inverters and with the sine wave inverters you'll be able to hear it a lot less than say a modified sine wave but it's here so you hear that noise it sounds like a ground loop but it's not it's actually the unfiltered AC side from the MOSFET switching at a very high frequency. That noise would normally have to be filtered through a bunch of capacitors or a ferrite choke in order to remove that buzzing noise that you're hearing. Uh, the other issue too is that the ground lug here is actually not connected to anything. It's just left floating. And as a result, any of that noise is going to get induced onto your... AC lines going to your amplifier. Now, what I can do is that I can go and just take the negative terminal of the battery and it actually gets rid of most of that noise. But it's still there. Ever so slightly. But that's a design flaw that normally wouldn't matter for most applications. If you're going to power your charging devices for say your laptop or your tablet for example that noise is not going to matter much at all here's a quick addition that if you wanted to get rid of that noise you can but it's a lot more expensive especially for a small inverter like this but if you wanted to know how to get rid of it this is how i do it what i've built here is a conducted emissions filter it's actually a filter from corecom you can uh, look up that part number it's 16 fc10 it's their series of filters that are specifically des designed for frequency conversion so going from dc to ac for example and what this is designed to do it's got a bunch of ferrite chokes some capacitors inside and any switching frequency noise that is not being filtered from your power inverter this will take care of it for you it has very good suppression across a broadband of frequencies of where these inverters usually operate in so if it's uh, 20 kilohertz that the, these things are running at that's more than ample for this filter to handle i even go a step further which you don't have to but because because this particular filter is quite expensive it's about 115 120 dollars but you also have type 31 ferrite beads here it's probably the thickest ones i'll put the part number in the description but what i've basically done here is that it goes in the output i've wrapped the hot and the neutral as many times as i can on each ferrite bead and i think there's six of them here and then it finally goes to the output here and i can show you now that with the filter on All you hear is the white noise from the gain stage. You no longer hear that buzzing noise. And I haven't done anything with the grounding of the battery or anything like that. But that's really the right way to get rid of that kind of noise. And just for a quick compare with a modified sine wave, this is the kind of noise you would get in an audio application. It's quite terrible. Unfortunately, with a modified sine wave, a filter like this would not solve that problem. If anything, it could potentially damage this or even damage the inverter. 
All right, now we're gonna go and stress test this. We're gonna load it up to 250 watts and just let it run. I'm gonna be looking for how warm does the case get, how, how does the fan sound, and we're gonna use my adapter kit here to connect to my battery bank down in the basement. The jumper pack here that I have is not designed to run 300 watts. It'll run 200 watts, no problem, but anything beyond that and it's gonna shut down. Plus the 22 amp hour battery inside, you're not gonna be able to run a 200 watt load or even a 300 watt load if it was possible for very long. You probably only get about an hours of time on a battery that size. So my battery bank downstairs is far bigger and we can run it for significantly longer to do a proper stress test on this little inverter. Here we are down in the basement and I have the inverter connected to my transfer switch drawing just on some lights down here uh, in the basement actually through my 12 volt socket uh, connected to my battery bank and normally I have the tiger claw powering the essential circuits in the house when I don't want the generator running but as you can see we are drawing exactly 150 watts 1.46 amps and about 110 volts out and what I can tell you is that I had bought these adapters here where it had alligator clips and you can probably see it better in the light here alligator clips to the 12 volt socket adapter but unfortunately nothing is ever really that good from china these just cannot draw more than say 10 or 12 amps at full low before they start getting very warm and the voltage drop will cause the inverter to shut down so that is actually a good thing because if it goes below a certain voltage, then it should shut down. You hear the fan running. Now pay no attention to my IOTA engineering. It's actually charging the battery bank as I'm running it. But here's how the fan is running at 150 watts. I think it could actually go faster, but right now I just don't have a feasible way to low test this beyond 150 watts as the 12 volt socket I have is fused for 15 amps. So I really can't even run 150 watts for too long before the fuse gets too hot and pops. But what I can tell you is that it is running 150 watt load, no problem. And that's really all I want it for. This is a great little inverter for the price that you get and I'm happy with the purchase. My final thoughts on this inverter is that this inverter is well worth the money. At $42, you get yourself a pure sine wave output, you get a couple USBs, and you can power a lot of the small devices around in your house if you really wanted to or in the car. I was not able to load test this properly up to 300 watts because my cabling here is insufficient, but I'm not too concerned about that because in for my applications, I'm probably not going to need more than the 180 watts that you would typically get out of a 12 volt socket. And really, this was what this inverter was designed to have. If they wanted this to be able to draw up to 300 watts, they would have had a different wire on here with some either some substantial alligator clips or some ring terminals to connect directly to a battery. But that's not going to be my application. I'm not going to knock it for that. But if you are looking for 300 watts, you really shouldn't be getting a 300 watt inverter. You should be getting a 600 watt inverter and drawing 300 watts on that. 150 to 180 watts on a sine wave inverter that can peak out at 300 watts continuous. That is how you're going to keep these inverters uh, from running too hot. And while the fan is a little annoying, it's got that high pitch whine. It's not terrible. It's something that you can just, you know, you have to deal with it. But if there's any questions or comments, please let me know. Um, I'm very happy with the purchase. And hey, you know, it's really cool to have. It's a nice little gadget to have. Thanks again for watching, everyone. Till the next video.